Hello, welcome to another Rust and WebAssembly Working Group meeting. Um, so diving right into the schedule uh, or the agenda, uh, the RFC triage should have a link there. There's a new RFC on uh, on adding traits with super traits to represent uh, inheritance in JavaScript so that you can call uh, a base class's methods without doing an explicit like upcasting like into the upcast. Uh, and I'm going to add that to the agenda in one second. And here it goes. So please, if you're interested in that, take a read, leave a comment. And let's get into uh, the Rust 2018 triage. I'm specifically going to focus on the uh, blocking release candidate stuff right now. Um, and let's sort by newest to see if there's anything new here. Ah, so there's uh, there's this new issue. Uh, which is about adding the previous RFC that we accepted uh, for allowing like upcasting and, and various kinds of like dynamic casting uh, to, to Wasm bind chain. Uh, so this is about adding all of those attributes to the JS sys crate. Um, and it's like a big checklist issue that, you know, should be fairly easily parallelizable between multiple contributors. Um, and yeah, there's a few new things. They're all pretty small Wasm bind gen things. Um, investigate why we aren't creating bindings for create element and exposing a getter for the global window. Um, not too worried about that. All right. So let's dive into status updates for the goals. Uh, so first for um, for WebSys, uh, I've been working on overhauling the documentation. Um, it's probably 75% of the way there. Um, so if you're interested in that, please take a look at the docs and give feedback. And hopefully they're easier to like, hopefully they're, the goals are to make it like more complete and like easier to understand like how, it, how does this Rust thing translate in, into JavaScript and vice versa? And you know, how do I do constructors versus methods, et cetera? Um, and so if you want to uh, read about that, that's mostly in the Wasm Bungeon guide, um, which I just linked in there. Um, the other thing is uh, I'm hoping to get the Wasm uh, Bungeon futures crate uh, published maybe Maybe not this week because it's already Thursday, uh, but probably next week, uh, which is one of our goals for release candidate. Uh, um, and then there's been just general more progress on on the web IDL front end. Uh, Wasm pack. Uh, I don't have any updates. Um, I don't think there's been a ton of activity in this area, uh, but unfortunately, Ashley can't make it to this meeting, and she would be able to point out all the things that I'm not aware of. 
Um, so, yeah. Uh, Sven, do you want to talk about uh, bundler stuff? So, I'm currently working on, on a new plugin to actually enable, enable the uh, watcher mode. Mm -hmm. So, we merged this first PR and the um, template, but actually the watcher doesn't doesn't work. Um, hmm. so, yeah, I just need to write a plugin instead and watch the fight myself. Myself. So, th is the goal going to be to watch just every .rs file? In your create, yes. Yeah. Um, it might be worth looking at. Um, Cargo's like build plan uh, because so there's certain various ways that like certain RS files could or could not be part of the compilation um, mm -hmm. kind of like if def and C uh, where like some module is only used if you're compiling for Windows and another module is only used if you're compiling for Unix um, and so Cargo actually has this mode where you can say instead of actually building the crate tell me all of the things that you would do if you were going to build the crate. Okay. Uh, and then that should list out all the RS files that you would be interested in watching. Interesting, yeah. yeah um, so it's, do you know the name of the command? Um, I'll, I'll look into it. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, if Alex was here, or probably Ashley was here, Either of them would know, um, but I, I'm not sure. Um, what I imagine is like, you know, in order to get like something that's working for the like 95% use case, just watching every RS file is fine. And then like, as a next step after that would be like using the cargo build plan. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, do you have any other uh, updates? No, that's that's it. I'm going to make a PR so. Cool. Okay. Uh, after that is documentation, um, and unfortunately, Michael couldn't be here either today. Um, so uh, I don't think a ton of stuff has happened, uh, other than the. Um, the Game of Life tutorial is the main tutorial now. Uh, I don't know if that happened in this week or last week. Um, but the, the WASM pack tutorial has moved into WASM pack, and the Game of Life tutorial is the main tutorial for the book. Uh, and we're going to next integrate WASM pack like we've been talking about. Um, the other thing was I landed a couple pull requests. I added. Uh, Crates, you should know section. Uh, and then also, I overhauled the tools section into tools, you should know. Um, and so these are now, before the tools section was kind of like a hodgepodge of like random tools, a lot of which were like, honestly, like, abandoned projects that people used to like start learning a little bit about WASM and then, you know, they learned a little bit about WASM and then they never continued maintaining or developing the tool or whatever. Um, and, and so now it's, it's a little bit more curated and um, generally these things should have, you know, production ready, uh, you know, more polished, complete, maintained tools. Um, and yeah, maybe a little bit more opinionated. So uh, also, please read that stuff if you're interested. I will link it uh, one second. So here is crates you should know. And Here is the new tools you should know uh, section. All right, and I think that's everything for the book. 
uh, website. Um, Sandil is not here, uh, but there has not been any progress uh, since last week. I don't think there's um, kind of a, a rough first draft of content. Um, and then we're planning to uh, merge that soon and improve entry. Um, and yeah, so I don't know if, if people saw, but there was this, uh, this Twitter thread that just went around. It was ended up linked in the Ruston WebAssembly news issue, uh, where apparently some Fortune 500 company, which the which company is not named, uh, they started using Ruston WebAssembly uh, on client machines instead of doing like a bunch of work that they were previously doing on AWS. Uh, and I guess like one person spent two weeks doing this and then saved the company like some number, some millions of dollars that's gonna like continue saving millions of dollars uh, every year. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And I'd like to kind of reach out to them and talk to them and see if we can, you know, get them to put a quote or something for our website or like, you know, write a white paper or something like that um, to kind of like share their story and something a little bit more professional than a Twitter thread. Uh, let's see, debugging, same. Uh, not much going on there, not much really uh, needed. And templates. Um, so there, Sven, you landed that uh, PR uh, to update the Rust loader and split the crate in JS into separate directories, um, which is awesome. And then Sindil uh, added the ability to uh, npm init uh, Rust webpack uh, and then like name of project. Uh, so that you don't have to like make a directory, call directory into it, and then do npm init. Uh, you can just kind of do that all at once. Um, there's, I know there's been a little bit of activity on the uh, WASM pack template as well, but I'm not uh, super up to date on that. I need to to read a little bit more about that, so I don't really have anything to add here. Uh, and that's everything. Um, do either of you have any other uh, uh, things you'd like to talk about for the agenda, the agenda items? Nope. Okay, well, uh, in that case, pretty short meeting since uh, you know, we had this last minute meeting room change and it seems like a lot of people weren't able to make it anyway. So uh, that's the whole thing. Uh, thank you both for uh, coming and have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.